Hi everyone, Mark here at Blue Glow Electronics. Hopefully a fun and educational video today. What we've got on the bench is an IFR 1600. I acquired this unit recently from a well-known, reputable dealer uh, that deals in these types of things. And um, I replaced what I had before, which was an IFR COM 120. And what I was really looking for was the upgraded screen. Uh, this is one of the newer models that has a uh, LCD screen in it versus being older uh, CRT. And the, uh, the COM 120 has a plasma screen in it, and mine had a couple lines in it. So anyway, I was looking forward to the upgrade. This also has sideband demod, which I was looking for um, as well. But a um, couple issues with this unit when I actually got it, and I'm going to attempt to um, resolve those issues, and so I thought I'd make a video out of that for you guys today. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, the back of it took some damage in shipping, uh, this little handle rail here. Um, as well as the front case got broken on it, and all right. Um, once I got it booted up, ran the self-test, all that passes. But the one issue I have here, if you kind of go into the menu settings here on the unit, so if you'll notice here, I'm on a voltage menu, but one of the options here ties down to F2. Well, F2 doesn't work at all. I don't know whether this thing, like I said, the front case got busted on it when it shipped. Uh, but nothing out of, you know, you can see how that one does something, but F2 completely not working. One more quick thing, the little front rotator knob here took some good damage on it and um, had kind of crammed it into the case. You couldn't even turn it, so I had to use some screws and loosen that up. Any rate, okay, being that this came from a reputable dealer, as you can see here, he sent me a brand new knob in the mail and sent me a new handle for the back of this. And then, um... We sorted out a little bit of a cash deal trade um, on me taking this unit apart and fixing the F2 knob here that seems to be having a problem. So, all right, so the individual that um, I bought this from sent me some instructions on how to get it apart. Not that I'm not an expert at tearing stuff apart, but sometimes, you know, uh, getting a tip from an expert that does this all the time, um, you know. So, anyway, take a screenshot of this if you want to follow them, but otherwise, I just read them and I'm going to get over here and open this thing up. So let's talk about how to get this unit up. Four screws here on the back panel that are kind of held in place with some latching mechanisms. Take these four loose and when you do, this little unit will slide back about an inch. Okay? And what you got is two little rails here on sliders on both sides that hold that unit in. Now, I went ahead and removed uh, the little Allen screws here that hold this unit onto it. Why? Because I wanted to be able to fix uh, the bent arm here that was on this side. And that's as simple as two Phillips screws here, took them out, put the new unit on here that's straight, put the two screws back in it, and that was simple enough. Now, the next part. Okay, now that you've got the back plate off, and you could have done this next step with just pulling this back the inch. That gives you the clearance here to then kind of grab this unit here, the back panel, and you just lift it up. And once you get it up enough, you can work it out and it'll come out really, really easily. All you got to watch out for, there's some little RF clips along the way that can pop off of each side. And if they do, just save them when you get ready to put it back together. It's super simple. And then you do the exact same for the bottom. And then as you can see over here, we've got this unit off and you can see these little um, RF units here. It's, it's to lock the cabinet in, make it basically make it a Faraday cage at the end of the day. So we've got the back panel off. We've already got the back panel repaired, two Phillips screws. Let's see how to get this front panel off and get these buttons straightened out. By the way, I've fallen in love with these little portable carts. I'm using them as workbenches. I can start a project on it. I can work on it. If I need to move it out of the way for another project, I can. I can roll it back in. I'll put a link to these in the video as well. Just super great, heavy-duty, industrial little push-around carts. Okay, the next thing we want to get off is this new knob. Uh, eventually, I'll put this new replacement knob on it, but it has two little set screws, as you can see here. And these are just hex, and it looks like to be a uh, 2 millimeter or 5 by 64, 5 64 of an inch. And super easy. Just get in here and loosen these things up enough. 
All right, up next, the scope input on the front here has a little piece right here. You have to push in a little tab, and then you can disconnect that from the bottom here. And I am on the bottom of the unit right now. We also need to loosen the nut here, take this nut off of the front here of the little end connector. Okay, if we take a look on the sides right here, right here, on the bottom, there's screw here. Basically around the edge of this bezel here, there are some Phillips screws that we need to remove. Okay, here on the front, down inside here, we have a ribbon cable that we've got to work out of the LCD. And at that point, you can simply just start pulling this forward. I'm actually got this ribbon cable loose, but as you can see down in here, there's another ribbon cable right here that I need to pull out. And then there's one right here that goes to this board that I need to be able to get out. I'm also going to have two little RF connectors right here, um, number one and number three, that I'm going to have to disconnect from the back of these uh, BNC connectors. And once you get these two loose here, and by the way, these do screw on, they don't just uh, snap on, um, and the two ribbon cables out, then you can remove completely the front end. I'm going to set this aside because all the work I'm going to be doing is on this front panel at this point. Alright, so the first thing I did was took a good picture or two of the face of this so that as I replace buttons or take it off, I know exactly where they go back at. And as you can see here on the back side, we're just going to get into each of these sections here of buttons. Um, and let me show you something. I found on eBay brand new uh, faceplate, and that's the way these were made too. If you'll notice, they've got little sticker inserts here. Um, but they've got brand new ones here for really cheap and a brand new set of full uh, brand new buttons. Nothing wrong with these buttons other than you'll notice they've kind of browned over time, probably from the smoke that we talked about earlier. Like I said, I do like the fact these are little modular units, so multiple sections. I'm going to take this one out first because this is the one that has the F2 button in it that's not working. And uh, we'll just get these screws out and get these off. All right, so four screws later now, and we have this out, and as you can see here are the little push buttons. Uh, this would have been F1 down here. F2, nope, I'm sorry. F1, F2. Now, interestingly, this button works. It's a little soft compared to the click on the first one, but it seems to be working fine. It could have just gotten caught up in how the button comes through the chassis into this. We're going to check that out. So get it, to get into the little button plate, believe it or not, all these buttons are held in by this little metal plate, which are held in by the sticker. So I have came along and pulled this little, I call it a sticker, it's probably a more fancy name than that. Pulled it off and like I said, we've got a brand new sheet right here ready to go. By the way, this sheet was $20 and I think these uh, set of buttons were $20. So you completely refresh the front end of your IFR 1600, 1600S. Um, just based on 40 bucks. So anyway, once you get there, let's see if I can get this off. Then you've got this little thing that just pulls off. The screws on the other side would have held it in um, that held that board down. But now it's just as simple as these little buttons come out and we'll be able to go through and replace all these. Put that lamination back down on there and we should be good to go. And I know I got to make sure that when we push this F2, see it could be something caught up right in here, uh, maybe even with how this thing, I don't think this is the first time this decal has been replaced, but I could be wrong here. And back to this might not be the first time this has been replaced, I think I've found what's wrong. There's a little black piece of rubber that goes around all the keys, and if you'll notice how it pulled up off of keys F1 or F6, 5, 4, 3, but when I get to 2, it's lifting the key. The key is actually on top of this rubber instead of being down underneath of it. That's what was keeping that key from working. So my guess is somebody had replaced this in the past and just didn't get F2 down under the rubber. Instead, it's on top of it, so it wouldn't allow it to push down. All right, as you can see, one of the first things I did here was flip all these keys up upright after I got them out of the bag so I can see what they are. And as you can see, uh, this came from Aeroflex, so uh, this was an original factory bag for 20 bucks. And I laid out the ones here that I'm going to need in this first panel. I thought I'd show you the difference in color between these keys. So this is the new F6, this is the oldest. Now the back of the F6 back here 
is nice and gray like the front of this one but the front uh, just the smoke over time has uh, consumed these things as you can see we've got our new buttons in now and I do have the rubber little grommet there around all of these and now we can take and just simply drop this back down before I do that though I'm gonna clean this off I want to get the old sticker off of here and I'll use uh, maybe some unwatered down alcohol maybe so I brought it down to the workshop here and um, what I'm doing is I'm just soaking it in a little bit of acetone. I tried the uh, alcohol, it was not cutting this stuff and acetone is really good for, and it's all about uh, residue and glue and whatnot. All right, I have definitive proof now that this is not the first time this unit's been off. Check out right here around this. Lots of uh, little plier marks on both sides you can see here where someone has bent this or tried to straighten this it was bent at one point um, which tells me someone's been inside of this thing somewhere along the way and didn't get my guess didn't get button F2 correct and thus why we're in this place right now all right we um, pushed the the metal back down in we put our four screws back in right here don't have the sticker on yet but listen Previous tech error is the best way I know how to describe it. I think before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and pull all the other sides and replace all the buttons uh, before I apply the decals. I think I'm going to apply the decals all at once. The reason being, I want to get these others off because I've got to get in here and get with some acetone and get some of this stuff off as well. And if I'm going to do that, I'm just going to do that all at once versus piece by piece by piece. All right, and looking at what I've got to do to get this little panel off, um, this has got to come out right here, this BNC connector, but it has a piece of, it looks like 300 ohm TV line connected to it that then solders to a connector here, but I'm going to have to unsolder that to get that out. All right, to get this board out, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight regular Phillips screws, and then two little nuts that I took off of here. And once you do that, then this whole unit just kind of lifts out um, with all the BNC connectors and the mic plug on the other side. Okay, as far as getting this uh, little sticker thing on, you just have to find a corner and slowly pull it. Don't go fast. The slower you go, the more likely you are to get all the glue up that's underneath of it and not leave it sticking down to you guys get the idea. Okay to get this back panel loose I did have to take out the little speaker mount that goes in here and we had to lift the little uh, clear speaker up but we've also got to take the little knob off on the other side of this uh, and once you get the plate off by the way there's a little metal sheet that goes all the way across like this and I'm starting to peel the sticker off of it once you get that off, then we're back to the little rubber thing. And i got to make sure I lift this thing up evenly all the way across, not tear it anywhere. Okay, you can see we got all the new buttons in. Uh, these three, there are no buttons that go right here. And then I just used a uh, vise to push all these down and make sure they're all square and underneath this rubber mat. We cleaned the rubber mat up a little bit. All right, as you can see, we've got one put down now. And I've got these all really cleaned up really good. I, I, I did a good bit of scrubbing and uh, I used some, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't really want to bring acetone up here and all around the screen. So I used some Goo Gone, I cleaned up the residue of it with just some alcohol and whatnot. Um, but nice and dry, nothing there. And we are putting stickers down. Ta-da! I'm super happy with how it turned out. Stickers went down well everywhere. Got this mounted back in. All the buttons seem to be working properly. I checked them all. They click well. Super happy. Okay, at this point I put this board back in here. I have, if you remember, you got to re-solder this little connector right here back on. I have put back in these two BNC mounts right here. And one thing I noticed that they had done, whoever had worked on it before, on these two nuts right here, they had put a dab of silicone on the top of each of them. And I'm assuming it's so that as this ribbon cable comes down, uh, the ribbon cable doesn't get pushed into it somehow and end up causing a problem. So instead of some silicone, I'm just going to cut a little piece here of two-sided tape that's 
fairly thick and that is uh, a little bit squishy and I'm going to put it right there and tack it down and then put that on top of it and I think we'll serve the same purpose in maybe a little bit neater way. So basically now we're at a point we just reverse everything we did before. We put it back on, put the screws back around, you get it. Alright, I'll tell you it took me about 20 minutes to get this face back on. When you had to kind of tilt it back up, reach down in here from the top, hook the ribbon cables up. At the same time I fed this thing through here, RF connector. On the back side I had to plug that little antenna, 300 ohm wire or whatnot back in that goes to the scope. And then it is a matter of getting this all pushed back up on here and I will tell you that these little, there's a little metal part here on the back of this bezel that goes in behind this. That was tricky. I had to get this side first, then work the other side, got it in. Similarly, when I got up here to the ribbon cable, I kind of put one hand on top. I pulled it out from the bench here so I could get a hand up underneath like this. And from a hand on top and one on bottom, I was able to push that in successfully. All right, we've got it all back together. Just a few tips and things I learned along the way. Um, one, these putting these two little connectors on the back right here. Uh, that plug into these BNC's, they, you have to put those on with the face off. If you've bolted this thing back on, you might as well unloose it. You can't get those things tight um, without that. Two, um, throughout this whole unit, it's a good thing. It's kind of a mil-spec unit. Everything is stainless steel, so magnetic screwdrivers do you absolutely no good, just to give you a heads up on that throughout. Um, Three, I've got it all back together, but I'm about to put the cover on it. But we've been working on this thing, flipping it upside down, doing different things. So I have gone through and pushed and made sure all these little push-on connectors everywhere throughout this unit are pushed on good and snug. I've also made sure all these boards are pushed in good and solid and anywhere there's a ribbon cable that it's pushed in very well. Um, so with that, we're going to get the cover back on that. And you know, I was just noticing this unit was recapped in 922. Um, which was why I picked this up from a reputable dealer. It had been gone through for the most part and recalibrated. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but one thing to note about these, if you ever recap this power supply, you must recalibrate these units. Anything that changes about the power supply, super sensitive in here to voltages and whatnot, uh, and you'll be out of calibration really quickly if you don't. So just a heads up on that. And before I put all the covers back on it, I wanted to come in to the auxiliary function and run a self-test and just make sure everything's working well, because if I've got to work on it, I certainly don't want to have to take the covers back off. Woohoo! Good news! This little P right here says our self-test passed. Let's get the cover back on. Alright, we've got this unit up on our RF test bench. Uh, local rock and roll station here. I've just got it on receive and I tuned it into FM. But I think it looks great. The buttons look really good. The uh, cover, the new covers on the front. I'm just super happy with how this unit turns out. And it passed self-test, so I don't have to worry about doing anything else to it. Slowly getting our bench built out here. I've separated my RF bench from my audio bench and whatnot. And slowly but surely getting this the way we want it. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you guys again soon.